Hey guys, Toolman Tim here. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. It's January 9th, 2022, and this is episode 55 of the workshop podcast. We got a special guest tonight, Tom from the Small Scale Life. He's been having a few technical difficulties. We were just having a great little chat before we got going, and then all of a sudden he dropped right off. So I'm going to add him back to the stream here, guys. We'll see how that goes. I'm here. <laughs> hey, Tom, how are you? Oh my gosh, I am so good. And thank you so much for having me on the show. I uh, I apologize about that. I am working with a computer that it, I feel like I need to take it out to the backyard and take a, a shotgun to it. So it's on its last legs, I believe. So I'm I'm happy to be here. Hey, that no problem. I, I get that all the time. People get on and they're like, man, I don't really want to talk to him. And then they just leave. So I, I get it. No worries. <laughs> well, you know, you have that effect on people, my friend. I do. Well, it's the it's the face for radio. You know, everybody's used to my voice and then they see my face and they run, run for the hills. So, well, yeah. that's why we're on radio. I mean, if we had the uh, perfect body, we'd be uh, Instagram models and doing wonderful trips around the world. Right. Ain't that the truth? Yes, I would. <laughs> I would love that someday, you know, so <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. Absolutely. So guys, I mean, yeah, we kind of jumped in here. I, I just, uh, I was just literally in the process of saying how we were having technical difficulties and then your beautiful mug come back up. So in case you guys are wondering, Tom's not sitting really, really still. That's just an avatar. He has his connections kind of in the middle. So he's going to look like a Star Trek character, you know, from the 1960s show where it sits there still. And when they talk, it, it glows and vibrates. So not a problem. We love having him on. So anyway, Tom, Take me back a ways. I, for people who don't know who Tom is exactly, just tell me a little bit about back when you used to get sent outside to um, weed the garden for punishment or get sent picking berries with your mom, that kind of stuff. Where it begins, it begins in the garden. You bet. Yes. We'll go in the way back machine. So yes. uh, my interest in gardening, I come from a long nine. I call them of winers and uh, winers and shiners. So we made, <laughs> uh, my grandparents made a lot of wine and they made, a well, they might've made some liquids that we'll know that was distilled. I, I don't know. I have a, this uh, uh, old still right over my shoulder in my office here, but uh, um my my grandparents and my parents were great gardeners and they had huge gardens and what they would do for punishment is exactly that <laughs> they would send me out to weed and i had no idea what i was doing and i hated gardening hated it hated it hated it i love being on lakes i love being in the woods but you know gardening was not my thing until 2008 and uh, i was with my family in illinois and the world was crashing around us and uh it, it all comes back to the to that bloody uh laura ingles <laughs> <laughs> my my wife was reading uh little house in the big woods uh to my boys and i was sitting here thinking you know if i got laid off from my job which was a distinct possibility as the world was crashing i wouldn't know what to do i wouldn't i couldn't I can't like churn butter and I don't want to, but I have no skills for like hunting and I haven't fished for years because I'm a consultant and I, I gar I used to, well, I was a kid when I gardened last. So I decided at that point that it was time to get busy. And so got into gardening, you know, and, uh, you know, t they always say tomatoes are the great gateway into gardening or into homesteading. I believe that. And that is what I did. I got really good at growing tomatoes and some square foot gardens down in Illinois. And, uh, at that point, I was like, you know, if I lost my job, there's no way I could afford this working at Walmart or something. So we need to do something radically different. And that began the journey right there. Uh, we, we moved back to Minnesota out of Illinois after nine years stint there. And I always wanted to come out to a farm, to get to a farm. And that happened this year. So we lived in suburbs in Minneapolis working for different jobs and and finally, after we were in North Minneapolis last year, when things went um, in the summer of love, shall we say, <laughs> and uh, just decided it was time. And we moved to an apartment and then we found this place uh, in June of this year. And we are at a little farm, 10 acre farm in western Wisconsin. And it is awesome, 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 awesome. The jump was amazing. And I know Jack Spirico talked about get out of the city, get out of there. And others were saying, get out of the city. And, and we actually did it. And now we're here and we're now we're like, Ooh, we got some projects to do. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff on our plate and it's going to be really exciting. Well, I, I listened actually, 
we had we, we've gone back and forth on what mm-hmm. we we're going to chat about and stuff like that and i listened to y- you and uh, julie's conversation the other day on the podcast and this whole idea of the destination is subject subject to change just kind of jumped out at me and so you gotta i you made it sound all sunshine and rainbows in there but go back a little I'm ways very good at that <laughs> yeah that's okay <laughs> I'm good at that I, no yep. it's i we have to, but go back Yeah, maybe to the morning where Julie wakes up early and you wake up and have the conversation, go back a little further because you guys had a whole different plan for a bit. Did you not? We did. You bet. Um, so are you talking about waking up in Minneapolis and saying this isn't working or waking up in our apartment saying this isn't working? <laughs> Pretty sure it was the <laughs> apartment because you were dealing okay. with yes. building supply yes. costs. And yeah, yes. Yeah yeah. 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 So yeah, there was a hop between there. So we were, we moved out of Minneapolis because I woke up that morning and said, this is over. We're out of here uh, when our city's burning down. So we got out to the apartment. Uh, but before that, we just that uh, spring, uh, spring of 2020, during the lockdown, somehow we escaped and we went to western Wisconsin. We found a beautiful two acre piece of land on what's called the Apple River. It's a nice, beautiful river. We, and there's always eagles flying over it. And we called it Eagles Ridge. And we were like, oh, we're going to build here. This is going to be the ho- start of the homestead. There were a couple of red flags we saw right away, but we're like, yeah, we can work with that. We had some covenants, right? Like mm-hmm. you couldn't have chickens. You can't have goats. You oh. can't have cows, you know? Okay. So what's the point, you know? And then, but I was like, well, we can work with that. And you can't have a house that's blue. Okay. We can work with that too. So we got a design for a barn dominium. We had it. We paid for design. We were going to build. We got contractors. We got everybody lined up. And as you know, the costs went out of control. Scarcity and costs during last year. And a two by four went from two bucks to twelve. You know, mm-hmm. and there was no way. And we started to um, try to get financing. We were going to pay for this thing in cash because we we had sold some property. We had done some moves, and and uh, uh, we had cash. And and man it it got really hard and we started looking for loans and it was almost like the universe was lining up against us <laughs> and it was one morning uh we were both just working with the banks and we went to bed and we woke up and i woke up first and she didn't know that but i was up at four she was up at four thirty, and she left the the room and i was like okay well i'm just gonna lay here for a while because my brain was just spinning on how are we going to do this project and she comes back in at six and usually I need an hour to get my brain wrapped around something and get it started. But I was awake. And so and she's like, I got to talk to you. And she was like kind of bouncing up and down. I was like, OK. And she was surprised because she didn't think I was awake, but I was awake. And she says, you know, I think we're looking at this all wrong. I think this is getting really hard and I don't think we should be doing this project. I mean, maybe we should look for something that's already built, that something's already there. You know, uh, maybe it has a little bit of land, like five or 10 acres. Maybe it's got a couple outbuildings. Maybe maybe it's got a chicken coop already. Maybe maybe it's got some berries and apple orchard. Or maybe maybe it's on a county road, like a not a busy county road, but a really quiet county road. And I was like, yeah, maybe we should do that. <laughs> and she was shocked. And that morning, we talked to a couple banks. We started to get pre-approved. And... Um, but then um, the next day, we're helping some friends down here, just about 50, uh, about 10 miles from us right here. There are friends moved down here last year and uh, we were helping to move some bunch of junk. And uh, we went out for dinner afterwards and all of a sudden a text came in from her brother down in Texas who was looking at, they had talked and he was looking at properties, just jumped on realtor.com and was looking at properties. And all of a sudden this place popped up at dinner and I started looking at this thing. And I said, oh, what's that? And she's like, oh, look at this place. And I looked at it. It's like, we got to go. We got to go see this right now. And um, and uh, I called a realtor. We got it set up next day. I went up turkey hunting up north. She went to the showing with her friends, with Trish and Bert, our friends, and FaceTimed me. And uh, and at the end of the of the tour, um, uh, they looked at me on the phone. They said, what do you think? And I said, do it. Let's go. This is it. <laughs> we're going to get we're going to get this place. Yeah. And so that night I was sitting around the campfire with my son. I wrote a really nice letter. I'll have to share that on smallscalelife.com, the letter that I wrote to the homeowners. And uh, sure enough, next day she called up. She's like, we got it. And that was amazing. That started the whole thing. So, yeah, it was a journey. 
it's a journey. We had to f- kind of fight for it, you know, and uh, here we are. Uh, yeah, I that story jumped out at me. I just thought it was cool because you guys, I don't know, when you're in sync as a couple, first, I mean, that having the right partner, obviously, you know, makes all the difference in the world, whether it's an entrepreneurial venture or moving around. But did you, when you both made that decision, did you just feel better almost instantly or at least like something was off your shoulders? Yeah, totally. Because it was so hard. It was like, it was like we kept pushing and kept trying and, and kept trying to figure out how to cut costs or figure out how to do it. And it just it was getting harder and harder and harder. And um, and once this kind of went through, it was like, yeah, this is not, this is right. This is where it, the path was much easier. And, and we already have a house. Now, granted, I could use it on here, Tim. I've got some projects. You know, <laughs> I should show you my <laughs> cellar. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you saw my foundation. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So I, I've got some projects, but you know, there's, there's, I thought, I thought the Eagles Ridge place was magical, but this place, there's something really cool here. And uh, it's going to be really exciting to just kind of walk with everybody through it as we build the garden. I mean, we have a ton of flower gardens here, but build my vegetable gardens and get going with all these different things. So yeah, it's, um, and remember, you said getting on the same page with your spouse. It is hard sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, and she's a city girl from Minneapolis. And she's like, no way am I moving out to the country. There is no <laughs> way that's going to happen. But you got to remember, 2008 to today, that was a long process of me working working her <laughs> to get to this point. And she's a good egg. She, she, she absolutely loves it now. And you know, the funny thing is, the ironic thing is, she was reading uh, Little House in the Big Woods, the boys back then. Where we live right now, the Ingalls homestead is like from Little House in the Big Woods is like barely five miles away down the road. And we know the people that are That's farming great. that property. Yeah, farm, have a CSA and they're, they're really neat people and, and they got a little historic site there. And, and it's just like, wow, there is no such thing as coincidences. We're supposed to be here for some odd, crazy reason. So here we are. <laughs> you're gonna have to uh you have to go up and do a visit if they'll let you like a little video or something i would oh, yeah. love to that would be cool but so where okay so we've we've got you kind of almost to you know to, i was gonna say modern times to today right you know sure, you guys sure. are there and you're on location and and mm-hmm. we we've chatted a bit and you seem like you're you know looking kind of toward the future and things and i'm sure you're, yeah. you're like me we're not getting any younger i don't know my, my hair is a lot thinner and a lot grayer than what what's left of it anyway but so what are your what are your plans from here like you know you got some entrepreneurial yeah. ventures that you're either doing or looking at doing or yeah see this is where the universe was unplugging my computer last time because you asked me that question right before my computer died and the universe mm-hmm. was like nope you're not going to talk about that so yeah <laughs> um <laughs> i have a steady eddy job with benefits right here um and i work from home for the most part i do get out and travel a little bit which is great and i love it best job i've had so far uh, but yes, we, um, Julie quit her job in the city and, oh, wow. uh, you know, yeah, we were country mouse. I mean, we're, we're a good hour and a half away through country roads to get to the city. So we're out there a little bit. Um, and she was working in the financial world. So, I mean, there is an opportunity, there's opportunities around for that, but we do want to get some small businesses going. And this is what, you know, I was on, uh, Nicole's show living free mm-hmm. in Tennessee, uh, gosh, a year, a couple years ago. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. And, and we're still figuring that out, but we would like to do something. And, um, you know, with, with, we, we've had small business before. Julie is a floral designer. She's a wedding floral designer, flower designer, makes wonderful bouquets and corsages and all kinds of stuff. She's done massive weddings before we could do that here maybe grow some of it. Don't know. You know, we have a short growing season, so it's tough. And to get everything blooming it when it's right, that's tough to do, but she's got a lot of connections in the industry. So there's that opportunity. Uh, we've got some outbuildings here. We could restore furniture. We could, um, have gatherings, you know, like Nicole does bring people into the, the homestead. Yep. Yeah. So, um, We've, we've learned a lot and, and we could share that knowledge. And, and there's people that we know in this area that that bring people together, too. So there's a lady right up the road, does yoga. You know, she does it at the church, but maybe they don't like that. I don't know. But we have a big <laughs> barn. We could do something with that, you know. So um, 
you know, there's there's ideas. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are beekeepers. That could be a road. And, and my niece is going to be going to college 30 minutes away. And she's really interested in bees. Um, you know, I know beekeepers say it's the million dollar business uh, when you spend two million. So, you know, I don't know. But, uh, you know, there's ideas. So it's a question of where do you start? <laughs> Absolutely. And we're, in case anybody wonders if, if we seem like we go off the rails just a little bit, this is going to be more of a conversation than an interview. Mm -hmm. So, because Tom wants to learn as well. And so we decided we would chat a bit about, I guess, my journey as well. What I, you know, we're just going to throw ideas back and forth. And I may right. do a little more talking tonight than I normally do in an interview. So don't think I'm hogging the spotlight, but that was kind of what Tom wanted to do was come on and chat a little bit about the whole process of starting business, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I guess, you know, we're, we're kind of in two slightly different, maybe areas in life where one's maybe a little further down the road of certain paths than the other, yep. you know? Mm hmm. Well, and, and to give everyone a background, if you don't know what small scale life is, how could you not know? I mean, we're <laughs> awesome. But, you know, I've been doing this game for six years and, um, you know, audience is audience and it, there's ebbs and flows. And, and it's like, OK, well, have you monetized this thing? And I'm sure, Jack, if he was sitting here or, or even if I was sitting in the same room and you're like, you're not making a ton of money off this. How are you what are you doing? You know, and uh, but it's it's. Yeah, it's uh, it's like, where do you take it? How do you do it? You know, how can you make some money with it? And I know that uh, you've been very aggressive and moving along rapidly, and I think that's great. So I could, there's lots I can learn. I know it. That's why I say learn, grow, do, be a little better every day because – hell, I don't have all the answers and I know, you know, you, you're, you don't either. So let's oh do my it. God, no. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's funny because you could talk to, I, well, we're all this way, you know, but you could talk to 20 different content creators and you'll get 20 different answers about first off what their metric of success is, you know, that's the mm -hmm. first thing. And, and mm -hmm. then, you know, you could have, again, like, I mean, you could have somebody who has 10,000 downloads on their podcast and they're making literally zero. And then you can have someone else who has 500 views and they figured out a way to make, you know, 50% of their income off that. Right. And right. Right. It's tough. Like, I, uh, you know, when I, 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 I personally set a goal uh, a year ago for the end of this year coming to be making a thousand dollars a month from my uh, online ventures, you know, for my content creation. And, and it, it, I'm halfway there, just over halfway That's there. That's great. Which, yeah. So, but I'm, you know, and this is the fun part of us, you know, everybody being content creators. I think for those, we'll talk about it too down the road, but when we get into the fireside freedom thing, mm -hmm. this is going to be, this should be a whole episode because we can all <laughs> chat. Because first off, if we can't, if a person can't learn, we might as well not even viewing this, right? Right. And, and also stretching and getting out there your comfort zone. I remember the very first live stream I did and it wasn't even, what would it have been? Six, eight months ago. It was out in my garage. It was 15 minutes long and I didn't think I'd ever be able to talk through it, you know? And mm -hmm. yeah, I guess forcing yourself to be a little bit uncomfortable helps us to grow, right? I, I can just imagine some of the things, some of the first that you've done, you know, going back through the podcast and that kind of stuff. But yeah. See, I go all over the place with this, but for me, I guess okay. the big thing has been find, finding the areas that work and then improving on them, you know? And yep. I, I love doing my live stream and my podcast. This is my passion. I, this to me is just too much fun. However, mm -hmm. I'm not making a ton off the podcast yet and that's okay. Like I have a long-term goal of, you know, we'll get it to a thousand, get it to a thousand downloads, start looking for a sponsor or two, but my big thing also is to have some products down the road that are value products that people are going to want to, you know, buy like some repair manuals and stuff like that, because, right. you know, us in our, our prepper field, we love to have hard copy, you know, printed paper stuff. Right. And that that's okay. But for me, my review videos have been that recurring income and hmm. that that's what we, you know, any, anytime you're creating content or we're out there making a side hustle, and my wife and I, we just had a long, well, we, we just took a two and a half hour trip in the, in the truck a couple of nights ago. And, and we just, we beat around ideas about recurring income because once you start one business, the rest of them, you know, you always have 
then it's like, well, wh what's the best idea to start with, you know? And, and okay, which one's going to bring in the money and which one's going to be, uh, you know, the best for recurring income. So I say all that for my content creation right now, you know, probably 20 of my videos are bringing in most of my income. And I've worked really hard at, you know, so review videos are fairly lucrative. So, and just about any industry, anything we, you know, whether it's gardening or prepping or, you know, handyman, we all work with gear every day and people love to hear you talk about the gear that you make. And then those videos just sit there and keep bringing money in for you. And, you know, I've actually seen a slight decline over the last couple of months because I've put a little more uh, effort into this podcast because this is long term where I want to head with it. Right. So it's a long ways to say that not everything works and we have to find find our way. And when we do find something that works, keep doing more of that. And when we find things that aren't bringing a return, don't be scared to cut them off because my channel started with the, uh, the growing your handyman business series. And that is, I mean, that was my baby right from number one. Right. And I stopped doing that. And that was scary to me because, you know, it was a, it was a passion project, but there was literally no return. I'd get 20, to 30 views each video and that would be it there would never be a bit of traffic again and it's not that it's not that i didn't love doing them i didn't want to do them it was just i only have so many hours in the day and i needed to invest in the things that were that were bringing some income back does that make sense totally does yep and i i have those videos as well and i have a few that have gone I wouldn't say viral, but maybe, you know, that have performed well over the past few years. And, and I, it really, you know, is gardening that, that people are drawn to with, with me. So, um, you know, the, the thing, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, sometimes you get hung up on the art, right. And it's pretty, and you want to do this and you want to do that. <laughs> and it, you're just kind of letting the river take you where it takes you. But if this is truly a business, right. And if we are truly making money, well, then you can't follow every rabbit hole. You got to stick with something and do that very well, I think. So, and that's kind of where I've gotten hung up in the past six years is, Oh, let's chase this a little bit and let's chase that a little bit. And then Jules want to get involved. And okay, we're chasing. And now I'm not cutting on her. And I'm really, I was so excited when she got on the show and it was like, mm -hmm. okay, let's chase this a little bit. And then suddenly it's like my small scale life is uh, looking a little complicated. And I actually did a nice interview with uh, Greg Burns from Ohio, uh, Contrary Beekeeper. And we had this simply complicated life. And it's like, yeah, oh my gosh, we had so much going on. And we had to really cut some of that stuff out because it wasn't coming back and making a return on anything, you know? So yes, I totally get it. And, and you talk about your early streams and stuff. Well, my hmm. early videos, I had sunglasses on cause I, I felt like I was weird, you know, doing the filming. So I just put sunglasses on. I didn't want to really see my eyes doing weird stuff and looking at different things or <laughs> maybe had some notes up there and I didn't want them seeing me reading. So yeah, I totally get it. Rick quick. I, I know you're just on audio, so you can't see the chat, but Brian from the lots project, he, he put up, he said, I took four takes on my first podcast episode today, but it goes live tomorrow morning. Thanks in part to Tim and Tom for having me on their shows. So that, yeah, I thought you'd appreciate that. That's pretty cool. eh? Absolutely. And I've got Brian coming up this week. He's going to be my, well, that's my podcast this week. We, of course, we have our other project that we'll be talking about later. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it, with this podcasting thing, we, you know, not to change subject on anything or anything, no, no, but it's met okay. so many cool people. And uh, yeah, I mean, learning from each one of them as we talk about things, because man, some people are doing some really cool stuff. But yeah, I, I totally agree with you, you know, focus on what's working and what's not. And, um, you know, we did, we did a little bit of wellness stuff, like um, getting healthy and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of where we started way back in 2015. You know, I was talking about getting healthy and doing that kind of thing, but I'm not a workout channel. Dude, I've got a dad bod right now. I used to be a football <laughs> player, but uh, you know, I don't think anybody's going to follow me to, uh, to physical greatness at the moment. You know, you follow like liver King or some jacked up dude for that. But me, um, no, we're not going to be doing that. And we just need to, Kind of shut that down and kind of keep moving towards what what's working. So, and another thing too, I I don't I find like because yes, it's a business and we mm -hmm. we want to improve the metrics and we want to 
you know, make more money mm -hmm. because that is the goal of a business. If we're not making money, we probably shouldn't be doing it. And if anybody look, you know, if anybody sends in the comments, well, you should be doing it for the love of it. Well, okay, that's cool. But you know, when you're four months into making five videos a week, every single week, there needs to be a motivation there more than just some esoteric, I want to be a better person and help the world. And if you're independently wealthy, go for it, right? I'm, I'm good with that. And, and if that's, if you want to live, you know, on your own and do that, that's cool too. But I say all of that to not lose the focus on what we're passionate about either, because, uh, you know, just my interactions with you, it sounds, you know, the gardening end of things seems like what gets you out of bed in the morning and gets you kind of a little excited in your voice when you talk. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know what I can say on this thing, but I can grow shit. So, you know, you can, <laughs> for some reason hey, no, I can grow stuff, you know, yep. and, and I'm one year I had tomato plants that were 15 feet tall and just loaded with tomatoes. I mean, somehow I, I hit it right that year and I've figured out a method to keep, you know, you could go on vacation for two weeks and your gar garden would be still watered and you wouldn't have to hire somebody to come over and do your garden thing. I've got that figured out. I know how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. And, um, you know, most people, they, what do they say? Oh, I forgot to water my garden. And that's where they die. You know, everything dies and turns into the Sahara desert. And, uh, that's me. yeah, right. And, and it's, it's the truth. And how many people have you walked next to at the store at, at your big box store and they're looking at plants. They're like, honey, should we get some plants? No, I have a black thumb and we're going to kill them all. You know, I mean, there's a way we can do this where we're not going to kill everything. We're going to get a good yield out of that. So, um, yeah, I get really excited about that. And that's kind of where I started was with a garden blog and eventually shut that down and tried to talk about more concepts and more things. And sometimes I go, Hmm, maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it's okay though. We, we live and we learn, right? I mean, you have to, mm -hmm. you have to try something and if it works, keep going. Right. But I, right. I mean, like just looking at your situation, I, you know, you could do, uh, homesteading or gardening, I mean, just mm -hmm. with Zoom or whatever right now, you, you could right. do, you know, you could do courses behind a paywall or you could do courses, yep. you know, live or you could do recorded courses. Uh, you, I'm sure, I, I know it's going to be a bit of travel. I mean, you could do that kind of thing, you know, even in person to an extent. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, you could start, maybe, well, how far out are you from, say, like uh, being able to take your wares to market, like, like we'd say, you know, like if you, if you're growing veggies and that kind of stuff. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, well, Red Wing is about 20 minutes away. That's a decent sized town. Uh, right. in, and there's decent sized towns, uh, within 20 minutes. There's bigger city, uh, Menominee, Eau Claire, they're within 30 to 45. And then the twin cities of course are, I mean, the edge of the Twin Cities is probably an hour. So it's not like, you know, we're kind of on the far fringe, if you will. Not not in the boonies. Well, kind of in the boonies. But <laughs> we, we had but, recently, uh, there was a lady that had a, um, she, she shut it down because of health problems, but it was a vegetable and eggs, like a, like a fresh, fresh good mm -hmm. subscription service. And she mm -hmm. did a, a route, you know, where she would uh, eat once a week. It was like a, a six or eight hour trip. And she would take orders, people would prepay online, and she would just drop them off at your doorstep, you know, and I'm just spitballing it there. But man, I'm sure there'd be money to be made there for you. Right, right. And this is where um, uh, Brian from the Lots Project and I had a, a great conversation about this because he's, uh, he's maybe what, how far are you, Brian? You're probably one or two hours, about two hours, hour and a half up from the uh, Twin Cities. So he was kind of facing this the same conundrum where he's got all these eggs and, and veggies and, and things going on, uh, rabbit now all this stuff, but to get it down to market, you're going to be, you're going to be taking it and it's going to take a lot of gas and a lot of energy to get down there. But, but, um, you start getting, I think you start getting that customer base and you start to, yeah, there he is 90 miles from the twin Cities. So yeah, he's out there further than I am. Um, but, uh, you start getting a, a base and I, the nice thing is, you know, we're not we're we're in this new community and we don't know a ton of people yet, but we we're starting to make, I think, what I think are the right connections. People who have lived here a long time, uh, people that have small businesses themselves. And, and what's kind of interesting down here, too, is um, there's some small business people that are actually, you know, we've all heard of maybe Freedom Cells or, you know, different yeah, yeah. small groups that are getting together. 
and it's like a small business cell and they're starting to create little small business cells kind of leaning on each other and trying to help each other figure this out. So the, the lady that's doing some of this organizing in this town close to me, I'm going to bring her on the show too. And we're going to have a chat about this stuff as well. So kind of like an impromptu chamber of commerce. Small cell, baby. Yeah. yeah. Off I, the grid, small cell stuff. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Like yeah, yeah. kind of like a little church group, but it's all talking small business and, you know, passing the plates and, you know, have, have some cookies and coffee and let's talk small business kind of stuff. And how do we do this? You know? To me, I get I, some of my best ideas come from chatting with other people, you know, uh, talking. Uh, if you've seen, I've been on the PBN lately, Prepper Broadcast Network, and some mm -hmm. pretty cool dudes over there. James, he's the guy just spitballing. He's the guy running the uh, the whole show over there. And we had a chat one night and he he's really, you know, I was talking about, you know, wanting to bring in more income into the, you know, into the podcast and that sort of thing. And he's like, well, did, you know, did you ever think about writing a book? And I'm like, well, of course, I'd love to write a book, but where do you find the time? You know, and then the whole concept of repairedness manuals come out of that. And that I make it public so people know, you know, that's where I want to be, like, you know, writing those and getting them out there to sell. But, you know, I, I'm sure that you're an expert in a few different things. And that's always, you know, ebooks are an idea too. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's so much recurring income. Uh, Ryan right. from the uh, next generation podcast, he goes by prepper dad. He's recently, he lives, I want to say in Washington and they have of course a huge apple, you know, surplus at certain times sure. of the year. They have a freeze dryer. They've started freeze drying apples, vacuum sealing the bags and shipping them all over the country. You know, there's, cool. there's just, there's no end to it. Right. 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 No, this is true. And, uh, yeah, the, you know, like you and your wife taking a long drive. I do a lot of good thinking on, on drives and also in the airplane. But yeah, this is, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's amazing where your brain starts to go and you really start thinking about things. And uh, I think, you know, yeah, there is, the book thing is something like this whole system that I'm talking about. This is, I've got two books in me, I think. Um, I need to sit down and, and start sketching it out and get it, get it going. Cause um, that's, that's one of those platforms that things start to build off of, right? Oh, I've got mm -hmm. this book. I mean, look at Dave Ramsey, right? Here's this dude who was bankrupt and he figured out a few things and he sat in his kitchen or his, uh, in his living room with a card table and just punched this out with a typewriter, right? This, the baby steps and all that stuff. And then he starts selling this little book, this little pamphlet, um, you know, hundred pages or something. And suddenly that turns into Ramsey solutions, right? Eventually over mm -hmm. time, not everything is going to do that, but it was where he started. And it's a, it's that foundation that you can build a whole building off of and not rotted from it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so, and again, here, here here's, I mean, you've got, so say, say you write a gardening book, right? And mm -hmm. say there's an entire chapter in your gardening book for the gear that you prefer, the stuff you like. And then yeah. you can have an, an ebook of that. And in the ebook, you can have links to your affiliate sales so that when people pick that up, it brings traffic back to your site and brings you more money in. You know, there's, there's no end. And of course, just being an author and having that book, of course, right. drives people to all your other content. And it's all these different funnels. I think I got the wrong analogy there, but all these different funnels kind of funneling into the same area, you know, and you want to get somebody coming into this one and then out to that one. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I, you say you have two books in you, but I bet you got 10 in you. You're full of stories <laughs> and hot air, you know? Oh, well, Hey, now <laughs> you live in, in cold places where the, the, uh, mm -hmm. the wind and the air hurts our face. So we have to have hot air, you know, to come out and counteract that. Right. But, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think there, I think what you're saying is right. And, and what we would love to do, I mean, we, when I wrote that letter to get about this place, we always mm -hmm. saw it as a place to gather that this would be something. And we got this beautiful little blue barn. I mean, it would make one heck of a great little academy, right? Come to the right. hall, come in and we'll feed you. Let's talk about this. Let's talk. Julie could show floral design and I could, you know, on another weekend, let's do, um, let's do garden stuff and uh you know and and just have little seminars or something i think that's great yeah those are what good. about you know, you've <laughs> got all this comments. land yeah yeah what about um what do you call it down there uh hip camp or um, oh yeah you know i 
because people <laughs> love to who does who doesn't love to be out in the middle of absolutely nowhere with literally nothing to do but look at the stars and you can charge them for it right right yeah yeah we have a back pasture and stuff it'd be it'd be tough for uh brian to get his big camper up in there but uh we do have other sp spaces and i see his little comment there about starting cult no i'm not dave koresh but yeah maybe <laughs> we could go for dave koresh light or something right and just not be creepy so <laughs> but i think you know i think we could do something like that here and um you know it's it's beautiful place we've got the rush there's so many things nearby the mississippi is right down the street and there's boating there's fishing recreation i mean there's a lot of campgrounds nearby too um that uh you know before we get this hip if we did that if we went down that route before we could have gatherings here and people could use those local campgrounds until we get something set up here too so i mean I think barriers to starting is something with some place people get stuck to and myself included, you know, it's you start creating all these barriers, right? You, Oh, I can't do that because I might fail or, or I might run into permitting or, Oh geez, Jewel's going to be mad at me or, you know, it's just too complicated. I can't figure it out. Right. And I think there are these barriers and, and fear of it. It's the fear, right? Fear is the thing that stops us all the freaking time. I I, I, there's no, there's no easy, you know, I am, yep. I'm 25% introvert, even though that is friggin' impossible no. to, you know, I know, I know. Right. But, <laughs> and I, I'm literally scared to death about almost every new venture I ever do. It's just, I don't know, but where, where do you go? Like if, if I guess if we live, if we always live paralyzed and just, and, and this is coming from somebody who, when I met my wife, I figured there's no way I would ever go from working a nine to five job because that's where the security was. You know, you work right. nine to five, you killed yourself, you got high blood pressure, you got a pension. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, you got 15 years after your pension, you're dead and you looked after your family, right? But then I met this crazy woman named Becky and who is just crazy in all the best senses of the world word <laughs> and she's the type that would just you know hop in a car and drive 10 hours just for the hell of it right and mm -hmm. she was always always just jumping at me and saying honey you deserve better you deserve better you know she's like you don't need to settle for this bullshit right and she's like just try something and if you know so eventually we took the chance and we you know i jumped on a plane with literally no money left in my pocket came out here and slept on a coach and thought i was going to work in the oil patch and then, of course, you know, moved the family out here and the whole worldwide price of oil collapsed and Becky got laid off. A year later, my thing got laid, you know, my my company shut down. So then it was like desperation is a really good motivator. But she was always there saying, just try it. And you know what? The worst thing that can happen is you, you friggin fail. Right. And then right. you try something else. But you know what the best part, you know what the best thing that is, <laughs> is that you find self-sufficiency and you find mm -hmm. just a little more freedom and you find the ability to tell the man to go screw. And <laughs> all of a sudden you're like, I don't have to, I just, I don't have to do it every day, you know, and I can yeah. just go and I can do what I want to do. And it doesn't mean that you're going to find what you need right away because you won't, I can promise you that, right. you know, if, if I was still doing what I did the very first, you know, few weeks of my handyman business, I'd be miserable, you know, but mm -hmm. it's, it's morphed into property management. And, you know, in the meantime, my wife started the daycare, which is, and you know what, we, we almost gave up on the daycare too. Like it was, it was to the point where we we're like, ah, do we really want to keep going? And we, you know, we decided, yeah, we're going to keep going. And then all of a sudden they turned a corner. Right. And yeah, I say all that. I'm not, I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm just saying, you know, damn it, Tom, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, and, and I would agree with you because that's something we've talked about a lot on the podcast as well is this routine. You know, we get out of bed, we get the kids off, we brush our teeth, get cleaned up, go to work, drive to work and a commute and go to work in a cube farm. And nobody really, nobody gives a shit, you know, about you. And, and sure, we have our water cooler chat chats and got projects to do and meaningless work to do and then we come home and we got to run around to activities and and then finally we get dinner late and collapse on the couch watch yellowstone maybe three episodes of that and finally go to bed at midnight and guess what we got to start it all over again at six o'clock in the morning and i can tell you what's going on in those boardrooms of those companies you're working at i mean um 
Yep. You know, I I was vice president, assistant vice president. Yeah, sounds like the office, right? Assistant to the regional manager. But I was assistant vice president at a consulting firm, and I sat in the boardroom with these guys and and gals. And and you know, their their thing was, well, the people that are high performers and complaining that they're not getting paid enough, they're divas. Crank them harder. The people that aren't working will cut those or or get figure out a way to make them work harder. Oh, benefits. Yeah, maybe, you know, we'll make some cuts here. Oh, they're getting bonuses this year. But yeah, if the company makes it, if the if the the group makes it and if their division, if their division gets it, then their group gets it. Well, maybe we'll give them that. But if they leave early, we're going to take that from them. It's just like, holy cats, I, I'm sitting in here. No, no, thanks. And and it was just it's it's really something because the man doesn't care about you. You know, you're a you're a widget in the machine. And this is this is the way we talked about it, you know, texted about it. I think small business is the way. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not manufacturing stuff here anymore. And uh, we've got to figure out a way that if those big companies or big agencies or whatever you work for goes down or gets outsourced, you've got something to lean on because because change is coming and it's not pleasant a lot of times. So what it's part of preparedness, right? You've got a plan B. You've got a backup. One is one is none. Two is one. Three is something you can barter with. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or me, I, l- I like to say three is a guarantee. And then yeah, there put, you go. <laughs> but but then I put in small print afterwards, not an actual guarantee. You know that kind right. of thing. But it, yeah. Right. But yeah. I and oh yeah. I mean, it's soul sucking just to listen to the the suits talk, right? But mm-hmm. I, what what do they say? You know, if if we died tomorrow, our our obituary, you know, the job posting would be written before our obituary. Right. And no, yeah, it does. I had to get that. You know, I used to think I was so goddamn important, you know, that they could never replace me where I worked. And I'm like, I'm just so damn good at this job. Mm -hmm. And then I realized it was just killing myself. And I'm like, my identity was wrapped up in my job and not in my family and my beliefs and, you know, my, my, my desire to, to do better, I guess. Right. But right. Yep. Yep. That was my thirties. And I realized real quick, yeah. you are correct. And, and, you know, we used to say that, you know, if I, I could get hit by a bus and they'd have my job posted before I, you know, my, I was cold and then HR came in and said, well, you can't really say that. We'd like to say <laughs> oh, if, you yeah. the, if you win the lottery, that's mm. much more kind. And I'm like, yeah, but it's still true. Right. Oh yeah. Well, there, there you go. So <laughs> I, we'll get back on here too, but we've got, man, sure. there's, we, we got a, I, I love, I, I've said it all the time and I say, you know, there's so many good people. They hang out in the workshop community with us, but there, there's some awesome guys in here tonight. But Car- Carrie Brown, he, he said he's working on a hip camp site as well down in Tennessee, which is cool. But he says, embrace the process. But I get it. I have to talk myself out of my comfort zone all the time. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's true. Uh, I, for, for me, at least, it's always when I'm trying something new. I'm always, you know, scared shitless and I worry about it the night before and then I do it and I'm like, oh, that really wasn't so bad, you know? Right, right. Well, you don't build muscle by sitting on the couch and eating chips and drinking beer. It's fun, I w- but, I wish you know, you did. Uh, for a little bit anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We'd be the strongest men in the world, but, you know. <laughs> And uh, two, two three-legged cats, that's got to be one of the best usernames I've heard, said, just started a group yeah. to find other community members in my area in Illinois. I'm so nervous, mm. and I'm not a people person, but I want it. What do you think of that, Tom? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what it's about. I mean, Amy Dingman on her, um, on A Farmer's Kind of Life, she got together with a small group of people in her immediate area that all live within two miles of each other they drive by and they wave at each other, but they had never sat down and talked and they suddenly found out that they've got all these things in, in, in common and they all want to can together. I mean, canning collective, that's something we're going to be talking about sometime soon, but um, you know, just coming together as a group and as a community and uh, yeah, you gotta, sometimes it's up to us to make it to fire, to start the fire, if you will. (laughs) It's gotta be us to start building those groups. So if you wrote, throw this one out there, you said you had two books yeah. in you. So if you wrote, if you started writing a book tomorrow, what would it be about? Mm, that's a good one. I think um, the one I would start first is the wicking bed garden systems. It's all about um, how you can make, uh, take a watering trough and make that into a self-watering planter or even like an IBC tote, you know, how you do mm-hmm. it. That's the one. Second one right on its tail is all about rain gutter grow systems. It's about um, you can take 
grow, uh, grow bags and you put them in a rain gutter or there's other things you can do uh build a little basin and put the grow bags in there and you can grow stuff and peppers cucumbers they love that stuff so yeah without me sounding well i'm just gonna say it because i don't know what what the hell's a grow bag grow bag is like a um it's like a wa picture a walmart bag right okay. but it's actually yeah. kind of a felt material black felt material and they come in two, one gallon, two gallon, three gallon, five gallon, bigger ones. I mean, you can get big potato ones that are like 10 gallon bags. And if you put it in just a little bit of water, you can water it from the bottom and that, that water will soak up through the soil and water the roots. You're not dumping it on the leaves. Like tomatoes have a hard time uh, when you water from above. Cause um, you know, think of your big sweet 1000 sweet 100 cherry tomato plant it's like a freaking bush right and all mm -hmm. that water sits in there it gets humid and suddenly you'll notice your tomato plant's got black spots on it right black and yellow spots well that's septoria leaf spot because it's just it's too humid it's like the jungle in there and you need to prune it out and and that's a bad virus to get so these grow bags help um kind of space everything out and watering keeping the water down low and away from the leaves I don't know if anybody else can hear that, but when Tom talks about gardening, something changes in his voice. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> you can tell you're passionate about it, my friend. Like, that's yeah, what I, yeah. I friggin' love it, you know? Like, and the thing that gets you cranked up and gets you going, that, and if you can make money at that, why the hell not, right? Right? Exactly. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, it's, it's that fear thing. <laughs> but I don't know why. It's like, God, just do it. It's, it's okay. It's above. Just do it. <laughs> I know. And, and you can't like, I don't know if for the people in the live stream here, I don't know if you can see it or not. There it is. I don't know. There, anyway, that's my tattoo. One of my oh. tattoos. And that's, uh, that's the blue Jays. And so mm. I'm a, I'm a big baseball fan, like a huge to the point where, you know, the last five years, other than this previous year, I watched probably 120 to 140 ball games a year. And that is like minimum three hours every night. So this last year, I decided I was going to build this content creation thing. And the first mm -hmm. thing I did was give up watching baseball. And, you know, wow. and the millennials are like, yeah, and all I had to do was give up avocado toast and stop getting my coffee. And now I'm a millionaire. Right. <laughs> so I'm just saying that there's, there's friggin' time, you know, it, yeah. I don't know. Like, it, I, I'm just saying, like, I love our conversation because I want you to, you know, I, I want you to get motivated. No, no, Jesus. I don't mean motivated isn't you don't do yeah, something, yeah. but I, I, cause I know I can hear it every time we talk about it. You're like, I want to, I want to do something. I want to, you know, I want to get, I want to find a little more of that independence. Right. And right. that, that was one of the little things. And I know that's just simple and small and whatever else, but that's one of the, the things that I ended up doing just to, to crank it out a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just, yes, you are correct. And, uh, there is time to be saved and, um, time to be used differently, definitely. And, uh, that is something that we're focusing on right now. In fact, I think Julie's in, in there building our farm website, which is cool. Awesome. And, uh, we're going to run our business stuff out of the farm. So we've already, you know, done some things on the, the government tax, government tax side. We've already taken care of that big, beautiful <laughs> thing, but you know, um, we're gearing up. So, um, like it or not, um, I'm pushing off the dock and we're going to start paddling like mad to make something happen. So, um, yeah, I hear there you go. Like, I want you to <laughs> you make it public. I know it's crazy. Like I, I make my goals public a lot and yeah. I, I bet you, I don't hit them all. I guarantee you I don't, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it's like, what do, what do you call it? That dream where you wake up and you're in your underwear in front of your class, you know, all of a sudden you're nervous, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I have some of those. And it, it, I have that dream <clears throat> where, oh, I'm coming to the test and I haven't done any of the homework. I don't know what that's all about. If anybody in the chat knows what that's about, just let me know. You know, you're sitting there with the test and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to answer any of these because I don't know. I, I there think, must be something to it. I think it goes back to, to fear. Like, I, yeah, I, it, I, I don't know if I anyway, every every time I've chatted with you, I always kind of feel like you're my brother from a different mother. And I know we've never <laughs> met in I know, like I just I don't know if it's, you know, our builds and our look and our, our conversation. And I just I you know, I think we have something in common. I really appreciate our conversations because yeah, I 
I, I don't know. I, and I love to, I love to motivate and I know we kind of get off right. on tangents sometimes, but no, that's okay. I, I'm, I'm excited for you because you guys are yeah. like, you know, where, where are you heading now? Like, are you, how yeah. many more, how many more years until you're ready to tell the man to stick it or at least semi-retire or yeah. Oh, that's a question. Well, um, I've told Jules Sorry. that I'm never retiring. No, no, that's all right. I'm never retiring. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and, and I don't mean and what, and what I mean by that. And let me, let me clarify. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I had two really good mentors at the union Pacific railroad when I was a consultant, really great guys. And, um, you know, they, they took me under their wing. Uh, we did a lot of good work together and they both passed away six months after they retired. Both one was fighting cancer. The other one got a brain tumor and was dead just like that. Great guy, just really great guy. And, uh, my dad passed away six months before he was going to retire. So I'm like, I'm not retiring. I'm going to be busy, whether it's, I'm uh, probably not my, well, probably not my job right now, but I'm going to be doing stuff and it's yeah, talking oh, yes. to people and podcasting, content creating, gardening. I don't care what it is, but I'm going to be a busy guy. We're just hanging with my kids, but I'm not retiring for sure. It's not going to happen. So we've got, we're going to be doing this for a long time. Y'all are going to be stuck with me for a long time. I hope you know. Did you see, <laughs> uh, I go way out there, way off in left field, but just before we, just before we come live, did you see who passed away today? Um, yes, I did. Yes. That, Cause we're, we're talking about people who are passionate and doing what they do, you know, but poor Bob Saget, 65 yeah. years old, you know, he was on the road doing his stand up. Mm -hmm. I just read a mm -hmm. tweet from him, how much he loved, um, you know, he was just so happy being back out there doing what he did. Right. And we, how do we know whether we're going to be 65 or we're going to be, you know, a month away from a hundredth birthday, like Betty White, but right. You know, and I, I, do you know, John Stossel, do you ever see any of his videos? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he had, he had Mike Rowe on there and uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to have Mike Rowe on my show someday. Just, just so you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. You, you're going to do it. You're going to, yeah, you're calling am, the shot. I, yeah, <laughs> I want, yeah. But he, he told a, <laughs> he told a story of C.S. Lewis, the author who um, yep. right after, right at the beginning of the atomic age, a student, uh, when I, I believe Lewis was a university professor and I might have this part wrong, but the student come up to him and said, how can you do anything? How can you live? How can you work right now knowing that the Russians could nuke us tomorrow and we'd all be dead. And he said, well, how did the people 2000 years ago live when they knew that a Viking could land on their shore tomorrow and burn their village and steal their children? And, you know, he said, we all live not knowing when our last breath is going to be. Mm -hmm. So we have to take some chances, live a little dangerous and get shit done. I don't think C.S. Lewis said shit. I might be wrong, but you know, other than that, I was like, Oh my God, if that doesn't motivate you, you don't have a heartbeat or you're, you're totally lost. No, I think he did say shit. I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. I... Yeah. Right. No, this was, that's true. And, um, you know, my dad, uh, was one of those things. We helped to move into a downsize into a smaller house and, uh, he wasn't feeling right that day and he walked, my mom came home with groceries and he walked behind, said, pop the trunk and then dead. Oh. And, uh, that was it. And I was, I was like a mile away putting stuff into a storage locker because we had just moved from Illinois and, uh, or no, moved from Florida. And I heard the, all these sirens. I'm like, God dang, that sounds really bad. I hope that person's all right. And then I get the call. So it's, it, you know, it's bad stuff. And we don't know when the number is going to come up. And we've got to be, you know, we got to make the best, the most of this life right now. So, you know, right. whatever it is, <laughs> whatever we're doing. And, and, and the other thing, Tim, I mean, think about it. I mean, we started, I started this whole podcasting thing. My brother asked me, why the heck are you doing this? This seems stupid, blah, blah, blah. And this was just last week. I'm like, dude, I've been doing it for six years. Um, but <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? Um, so we start, I started this after my dad and my grandma passed away. All that, all that knowledge was gone. And I'm like, you know, my boys don't care about gardening or whatever right now, but someday they will, they might, mm -hmm. right? And my voice is going to be out there in the ethernet. If I'm gone, somebody, them, maybe their kid, you know, my grandson or granddaughter, is going to be able to hear my voice and say, Ooh, that's how grandpa did it. That sounds pretty cool. Let's do that. So I, th I think, you know, even though we haven't made any money yet, or maybe a little bit of money or haven't reached our goal yet, our voices are out there and we're out in space for better or worse. But 
somebody's going to know that we're there, you know? I love that. I, I remember as a kid, my, my, my best friend, my grandfather, he died when I was five. And then my other uh, grandmother on the other side, she died when I was nine. And I didn't really remember her. Mm -hmm. And I remember maybe when I was 13, 14 years old, dad found this box of tapes and in there, you know, she was a very religious lady and a lot of it was just recordings of sermons and things like that. But in there was one tape with her voice on it, you know, and it was very short, you know, it would be like the equivalent of a, a voicemail message or something. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember what she said. It was just, it was like, you know, coming from the other side of the grave, being able to hear her voice was just right. so stinking incredible, you know? And right. I think about that all the time, you know, that I love that you said that because all of this content we're creating is like a love letter to our kids or for our kids, you know, yeah. for, our, for our, the next generations, because, you know, whether it's, whether it's going to your aunt's house to learn her secret recipe so that it doesn't get lost or you right. know, my grandmother teaching me how to can pickles and strawberry jam when I was finally, when I was 22, because I finally wanted to learn, you know, right. th that kind of stuff. And I love that, Tom, like there's a book right, right there. Hey. Yeah, no, that's true. And, you know, uh, my dad, my dad played for the NFL. He played for the Denver Broncos and Houston Oilers. And, uh, you know, he asked, he asked us one day, he's like, you know, how, how is anybody going to know that I was even on this planet? We're like, what the heck are you talking about? You played seven years in the NFL and you're wondering this. I mean, hmm, well, you're on podcasting. I've got all these shows and I got videos. So I guess somebody's going to know I'm around. You might not like it, but hey, I'm around. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. Carrie Brown, he said, uh, I'm looking forward to not retiring along with all my other homesteading friends. And I mean, I think, you know, that's, we say retire and, you know, for some people yeah. retire from work again, working for the man. Right. But working for yeah, the man in, in like, like you said, so many people go home, they put their feet up, sit in their rocking chair and three months later, six months later, they're dead, you know? And yeah. I think working and my dad retired four or five years ago, he still works a part-time job. So, you know, how's that work? But he is busier mm -hmm. now than he ever was. And that's one thing that man will never do is sit down and, you know, he'll watch his hockey games, but that's about it, you know, and he is busy <laughs> and always has something on the go. And I think that and he's always said that he thinks that's the key to, you know, keeping your brain young and, and keeping active. And the entrepreneurial mindset, I think, is, you know, we'll work till we're dead. And I don't mean that in a busy sense, but, right. you know, I think our retirement or at least my retirement plan is to keep doing what I'm doing, just maybe a little easier on my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, homesteading, farming, uh, being the, um, being a handyman. I mean, that's climbing up on ladders. It's tough on a body. So there's gotta be something beyond just a retail, you know, it's, it's that knowledge that we're gaining along the way. And I think, you know, it's like, it's like dog on it. All the elements are there. Just need to put it together and package it. You know yes. what I'm saying? <laughs> and you will. I love it. Like, this is cool. I mean, this is like Tom and I, before we started, we're like, you know, or while well, we kind of chat it and stuff and we're like, you know what, this will just be a conversation about figuring yeah. out what we want to do, you know? And, and I love it. You know, Jaggy yeah. says, um, well, actually, sorry, Dave, first he said, uh, talking about uh, Darby Simpson who walked away from the farm, but came back to it. And hmm. it seems to be a lot of us, I, I don't know, of our generation, we didn't really want to hear what our parents had to say, at least when we were yeah. younger. And then all of a sudden, right. geez, you, you hit a, I don't know what, at what age it changes, but all of a sudden you realize my dad wasn't an idiot. He's an absolute frigging genius. And now I need to learn from him. Right. 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 Yeah. Let's see. What age was that for me? Uh, doing a quick calculation because, you know, my engineering brain. Yeah. yeah. We use calculator. So, you know, what, my thirties, forties. Uh, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was I was in my my mid twenties, but we started the family awfully young, and uh, I've yeah. said before oh, that abject poverty is a good motivator, and I had to learn a lot of things from him. You know, how yeah, how old were were you when you had when you started being a a mom and dad? Uh, very young. Um, I have mm. a I have a son who is twenty four. Um, no, so, that one that's twenty seven. <laughs> yes, and I, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, forty one in. March. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah I've got right? a, I've got a couple of years on you, man. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. We're good, you know. But yeah. And Jaggy says uh, if you worry about dying, you'll never get anything done. Every time I went into battle when I was in the military, I was scared as hell. But mm -hmm. I said to myself, I was already dead, so don't give in to the fear. 
Mm. You gotta. Wow. I, I'm gonna meet Jaggy someday in person. Him and I, we're we're pen pals now. We actually send. Uh, and Jaggy, if you're listening, I just sent a letter out on Friday to you, but we actually send snail mail letters back and forth. And this man, that's cool. is an absolute bottomless pit of wisdom. And then mm. his next comment, I got to read this just so it gets in the live stream here. But he says, I still have, uh, sorry, I still phone my son's voicemail. He passed away two years ago, but I can still talk to him. So that is friggin' yeah. I, I don't know what more to say there, Jaggy, but that is cool. Like it, we're talking about having even just a little legacy there of being able to chat with somebody, right? Absolutely. And, and, you know, um, yeah, that's, that's really an amazing thing. I mean, my Julie got really upset when she changed phones and she lost her mom's voicemail. So, um, you know, last words her mom said, so, um, I get that. And, you know, my son was in the military, did tours in Afghanistan, and I, I get that too. And, and uh, you know, it's these are tough, tough jobs and tough careers and in tough situations we find ourselves in. And it's never good. It's never, it's hard to lose people, you know, hard to lose our close ones. I, we went in different directions, or we've gone so far in different directions than I even thought we would, which is we find our motivation everywhere, <laughs> you know. But, um, <laughs> This one's good too. I got to share. Dave, Dave says, I think this is a quote actually. But he says, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years by Mark Twain. Mm. <laughs> and that that's is a really good one. Yeah. I love that. You know, that is, that's yeah. good. But so, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's just so much there's so much there you know so yeah i think uh go ahead i was gonna jump in but go for no, it no no it's okay like I, I, sure yeah. no so what do you what do you think if you had to pick one venture that you wanted to start with to start making some money that you think could make you the quickest money or at least something you'd be passionate about and enjoy and maybe not take up all your time all kinds of questions mm. what do you think it would be for you you and julie no, I'm thinking silence. That, that's that okay. Pause, right? Yeah, yeah that's all right. Well, a um, couple things that's going to happen this year that is happening. So uh, Julie has some weddings oh, wow. that she will be doing weddings, which is great. And um, I'm, I'm, well, I would be kind of releasing it yet, and I don't know if I'm ready to do that. But there might be a gathering later this year, so we'll see. Uh, you know, offering it up to people to come to the place and. And do some like a homesteading jamboree thing, but that's in the works. So I, I got to see if we're in a position to do that. Uh, and that would be, you know, charging don't people kind of like Nicole. And oops, oh, sorry, I cut you off. I just telling you, don't be scared. It's okay. <laughs> oh, did I lose you, Tom? No, are you there? There I am. Yes, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's okay. I think I bumped my mic. Um, so there's, and then get my butt working on a book. So that that is what I'm going to do. I love it, and I'm I'm going to keep you to it too. I'm going. I know you are. <laughs> yes, I, which is cool because you know, I something the other day, guys, when I did the was it in the live stream? It had to have been because I'm pretty sure it was you who put my goals out there, right? About. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I, my goals this year were to become a better interviewer, to become a better podcaster, and to become a better reviewer. And I said them out loud just so people would hear it. And then Tom, in his smart assness, had to type <laughs> them down so that now they're forever in the pantheon or the, uh, the ether or whatever of uh, internet chat. And so now they're literally on electronic paper and I have to live up with them live up to them. Hey right? man, I was, I'm just, I'm just helping you out. That's all I was doing is helping you out. <laughs> I pre it's called <laughs> accountability, right? And right. I'll we, be your Huckleberry. <laughs> absolutely. We, you know what? Speaking of accountability, then uh, we're getting, we, we've been over a little over an hour now, so we'll, we'll start yeah. wrapping up pretty quick, but sure. let's talk about real quick. Wh wh what's pretty special. That's coming up on Tuesday. We got this really cool thing going on. Hey, we do. And this is going to help our interviewing skills, our podcasting skills. This is called the Fireside Freedom. And special shout out to Brian over at the Lots Project who had the brain, the brain trust, the idea. But he's pulling to get, he's pulled us together. Eight of us content creators are going to be together and we're going to be sitting around a fire essentially and either uh, pouring gasoline on it or diesel or, or just having a great conversation over a couple of co cocktails or warm drinks or something. But yeah, this is going to be great. So we've got Amy Dingman, 
uh, yourself, me, uh, Brian, Letty Lou from Liberty all day long, Hawkins, Buddy. Um, one more. Who am I missing? Oh my God. Uh, Letty, Buddy, Hawkins. We're, I'm, I'm sure we forgot somebody. <laughs> I know. Oh, no. I know. There's one more. I think I was, was kind of running through me, the fingers. Me, you, Buddy. Anyway, Hawkins. We, we, it, it'll it'll come to us as we. we I know. I know. Here. I know. But it, talking so, about so the great things come from these little Ken, tiny ideas. Ken, Ken thank you. Ken, oh my God. Brian, oh my gosh. Now, so. He's going to kick our, yes, he's going to kick Ken's our Ken's too ass. polite to, to kick our <laughs> ass, you know, he'll, 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 especially with that Southern drawl of his, you know, he'll, uh, he'll be like, oh, yeah, I can't do it. I try, but I can't. <clears throat> but so something uh, about this, again, great things come from these little tiny conversations, right? Right. Now I know that this wasn't the, the first time that Brian had this idea, but I had him on the show uh, a few months back. We had a great, great conversation. And afterwards, you know, we always have a little uh, post chat, you know, which is kind of cool. I always enjoyed that when I was on other people's shows as well. And he mentioned to me, he's like, you know, I have this idea for a collaborative podcast. I'm not even sure exactly. That was about all he said. And I just said, man, run with it, go with it, do it. And I love seeing when people just run with it, go with it and do it. And that's exactly what Brian did. And he is just taking the ball by the bulls, uh, the bull by the balls or the bull by the horns, you know, <laughs> the bull by the horns, I think yeah. down here. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. But yeah. So, and look what he's done with that. Right. Like yeah, just that right? one little thing. And all of a sudden he's like, let's go do something great. And now he's just kind of pulling us all along and yeah. Right. Right. And, and people are, um, coming up with some good ideas. I mean, the show topics, I, I was looking over the show topics again. I'm like, wow, these are going to be great topics and we're going to circle around with small business stuff. And we're going to be talking about some of that and, uh, in a future episode, not this week, but, um, there's some really, <laughs> there's some really good stuff that we're going to be, uh, that we're going to be covering. And it's, a, I know you saw that too. I did. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that up. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Uh, it's, it's, what's fun is, you know, I met Letty this week and I met Brian and I've met Amy. I've had a beer and, and a hamburger with Amy and Brian was out to Eagles Ridge and Letty. I went up to her place and said hello. And, and, uh, it's really cool. These, these folks are great and it's going to be a really interesting mix and different perspectives. And, um, you know, it, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. I mean, just us two, we can, we can, we'll just be talking for, for the whole time and the <laughs> others will catch up to us. So, you know, well, that, you know, I always joke, but that's one of the things when you're in, when you're a podcaster and content creation, you have to like the sound of your own voice, because if you don't, you probably shouldn't be doing what you're doing. And I, but I, we're going to have, you know, Brian's going to be, well, whoever happens to be moderating will be good, but all kidding aside, it, I am, I am so stoked about this. Like it's going to be a ton of fun. And the other night we had this behind the scenes get together. Now this is more for mm -hmm. the audience to hear about, but it was cool because for me, at least it was the very first time that I had spoken live in person with pretty much almost all of you guys, you know, but I've been consuming most everybody's content on there for quite a while. So it was like, oh, you kind of know someone, but you don't really know them until you right. converse. And I was like, this is going to be a fire project. I am. Yeah. I, I can't even wait to see where it goes. It's going to be awesome. eh? Right. Right. And I think what's cool is we got people from the South, the Midwest and Canada and, yep. uh, Brian, he's got, he, oh yeah, there, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but it's going to be cool. It's a little different than like the Tennessee living free in Tennessee or, or, or unloose the goose or, or Jack's things. Um, you know, it's a, it's a little different experience up here. I mean, those folks aren't dealing with sub zero temperatures and, and trying to keep animals alive or, you know, we're not growing stuff right now outside. That's for sure. But, uh, you know, other things are, yeah, right. Other things are going on. So, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. I think. I'd never thought of that until when we first started behind the scenes, putting together like all the different podcasters. And I don't even remember who the first one was to mention it, but they're like, this is cool. It's kind of like a Midwest contingent, you know, and I, I know I'm right. the North Midwest, but that, we, we do, like you said, we deal with completely different things up here. And it doesn't mean that what we talk about won't be pertinent to everyone, but there'll be times like, you know, the other night I had an episode on keeping the heat on and Ted's from Florida. Well, that didn't really apply to him, mm -hmm. you know? but, but there's always stuff to learn. And you're right. This is going to be a really cool segment of creators that are going to, yeah. you know, we're going to bring something different to the table and, you know, 
uh, positivity for sure and solutions for sure and, and lifestyle, you know, how, how to get better, Absolutely. what to do, where to go, how to get there, how quick to get there. No, just, you know, but it's, it's, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I don't know about you, Tom, but I'm looking forward uh, to oh. it. Absolutely. And I have to go back and watch that episode about heat because we got electric baseboard heat here. I do have a gas fireplace, but if our power goes down, it's toast and we're toast. And so we got a, this is one of the problems with a 1900s era farmhouse mm -hmm. and things we're going to have to figure out here in the heartland. Well, we, yeah, well, uh, maybe we'll end up doing one on, you know, on that kind of thing with the, the collab, you know, eventually. But. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So where do, um, yeah, where do people, the people are like, okay, I like this picture of Tom. I like what he's had to say. Where do people find a little more out about you? Oh, yes. Good stuff. Well, definitely this week on Fireside Freedom Podcast, we're going to be there. But you can find me on smallscalelife.com. That's the flagship there. We're, uh, Small Scale Life Podcast is on, gosh, all kinds of streaming apps. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel. Um, uh, we have, I'm very busy on Instagram and telegram. I'm there as well. Got, uh, I'm there on me. Uh, but telegram has kind of taken a, uh, I've spent more time on telegram actually, mm -hmm. you know, got some good people there with good conversations. So, um, everybody's telling me I got to get on float. Here's me. I'm like the, I'm the caboose of the group. I'm not on float. So I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people on the chat here. And I know Brian's going to start piping up here in a second with his new video. But, you know, this is where I'm at. So, um, yeah, just really, I really appreciate being on your show, dude. Well, I got to, in case you, I, I got to get this plug in here now that we're at the end. But if, so you haven't tried Float yet, or at least you haven't got there yet. So we're live streaming over, sorry, guys. <clears throat> sorry about that. We're live streaming on Float as well. And tonight, mm -hmm. just, just to put this into perspective, while we're talking, I got a wave from the CEO, King, Kingsley, and, and uh, he come in and said hello while we were doing our chat. And then about 10 minutes later, I got a, a super chat tip from Aaron, his wife, who's the co-founder of the company. They came in and uh, and tipped our live stream. So it is like hmm. I've never seen more accessible company and an incredible I, I I will get I will get on my soapbox and preach about the gospel of float all the time. They are incredible people and it is an incredible platform. So get your ass over there, Tom. <laughs> come on zuckerberg gives me uh, all kinds of fun stuff on facebook all the time right <laughs> yeah i sure yeah yes. censorship algorithms and a big boot up the rear so yeah <laughs> all right i'll get over on everybody i'll get on float here i come so i'm gonna get there awesome oh yes absolutely good times dude oh cool. and i'm on odyssey too i'm i am on odyssey so i have made that jump and and i do like that platform so everybody check Tom out. Thank you, Tom. If you want to hang around for just a second, I'll, I'll close up Absolutely. and we'll, uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Very good. Thank you. All right, guys, that, I, what, what more can I say? A little different than the normal, but it was an awesome conversation. I, I, it was just one of those things where we're like, you know what, we're just going to shoot the shit and see where we end up. And hopefully, hopefully we motivated the hell out of people. You know, it's two different people on two different journeys doing two different things and tom is just a freaking awesome guy he, he's the type of guy he never mentioned but he goes out and he does grounding where he walks barefoot year round including in the snow and i think he's crazy but he's an awesome dude so we'll have him back on here again uh, maybe even live with the the video stream as well but anyway guys thank you so much for dropping by i know i say it each and every week we're busy people you guys have time uh, to only spend in certain areas. And I appreciate the fact that you'll come and hang out in the workshop with me. So anyway, guys, as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.